Hello, my name's Matt. I'm one of the trainers for Circle Pause. I'm also a bookseller myself and have managed stores for over 15 years. I've managed group stores and stores in different locations. Uh, I've also experienced going through the migration process myself. In this video, we'll be working our way through our training session two. We'll be covering load stock, stock input, title record, core stock and thresholds, purchase orders and rep orders, inwards goods, and exchange and refund. Load stock is the process in which we load metadata into our system. First checking the community and then checking data feeds to obtain that information from publishers. So like all inventory management, load stock is done within the back office. Under stock, load stock, we have our barcode search box here. Uh, any ISBNs or barcodes that we wish to load into our database is done through here. So I'm just going to scan this book in front of me and then I'm gonna search for it. So as soon as I do that, I can see here in this circumstance, it's found all of the data within the community. And you'll see that it happened quite quickly. So uh, moving from left to right, we have obviously the ISBN, which we've just scanned. We can see both the publisher and imprint. Circle was able to work out that information. Uh, I can see the title here. Uh, these ticks here represent uh, image and description, which is fantastic. That's good for our website. Now, there is no cost price loaded for this item. We can set that in a second. Uh, we do have the regular price and the sales price. Now, they're going to be one and the same in this situation. If you did want to change this to a sale item, you could do that at this point. Uh, we also have the category option here, the field here. Uh, the category field is blank at this point, but we can certainly add a category in here as we're loading it into our system. So looking at this book, we might decide that it is a classic and we can choose classics from our category list there. To set the cost of an item, we're going to use our margin calculator. Now I can see here the markup column, it's now saying it's 100% markup because that's coming off zero. If I did want to set that uh, cost price here, I can simply put in the margin that I get from the supplier. So in this circumstance, it might be 40%. And then I can press the arrow here. Either arrow will work. One is the, the first one here is calculate cost from sale price. Uh, the one next to it is calculate cost from regular price. Well, those two numbers are the same in this situation. So it doesn't matter which arrow I press. Uh, as soon as I do that, you'll see that the markup is now 40% and I have a cost price here as well. If I'm happy with the information that I can see here on my screen, I can press add and order. That will load this book into our database. Now that we've successfully loaded this book into our database, let's have a look at what we can see on the screen here. So once again, moving from left to right, we have our info button here. If I hover over that, I can see some of the specs for the book. Uh, if they're made available, dimensions, weight. Uh, more, most importantly, I can actually see an image of the front cover, which is really handy when you're trying to find it on the shelf. Uh, I can see the ISBN. Uh, I have the title here. Now this is clickable. Uh, I will go into that in our next step. Uh, Author, if I click on the author's name of a book, it will load up all of the books by that author that are within our database. So it's a nice way to, uh, a handy way to find things if customers are asking for a particular author. We have our recommended price here or our regular price and a, and a sale price. They are one and the same, that's what we added them as. Uh, we have our category here as well. We can see where the book belongs. We have agency, publisher, and distributor. Now this information will be set automatically. You can change that if needed. Most of the time though, you'll find that that is correct, that if we're looking at 
a particular publisher. We know who the agency is, so who is the company that we speak to about our discounts, and then who is the distributor for that product. So who actually pops it into a box and sends it out to us. Uh, if you do need to change the distributor for a book, you can do that by clicking on the set button and choosing the distributor that you wish to change it to. We have our availability column. This will show you from the date that the book was made available. Most importantly though, if the book happens to be out of print and you weren't aware of that when you loaded it, uh, it will show you that it is an out of print title. So that's sometimes quite helpful. We have our orders column here. So within our orders column, we have our cart, so we can see if we have any items within our cart already, ready to be sent off to suppliers. We have our orders column, that will show us if we have any actual active orders for this book. So any orders that have been sent off to anywhere, uh, reps, uh, distributors, they'll be listed in here with an, a clickable number. We have our unfulfilled sales column here. So this is for a customer order. Uh, we'll see this little man symbol pop up quite often in Circle's back office, and it'll always represent a customer order. So that's a way that we can see straight away if that book is a special order or a customer order for someone. What we also have here is our notes. These are purchase line notes. So you may have staff which perhaps go through lists of products and add them to your shopping cart ready for you to send it off. They have the ability to add some notes in there too. So it might be something that's um, been uh, heavily publicized within the media. So they might put a little note in there that they'd seen it on television. They're internal notes, so they're only ones that you will see. We have our sales history here. So this is very, very basic sales history, but it's great to see at a glance. We have three weeks two weeks, last seven days, and all time sales of this product. So every time you look a product up, you can very quickly see how the book has been selling in your store. We have our stock column here. So we can see how many copies of this particular book we have on hand, zero at the moment. We have our approval column here. So this would be when you are allowing uh, educational or schools to take product from you to decide whether they want to take it. So they're essentially taking it on approval. It might not be something that's relevant to all businesses, but we do have that built into the system. This little man symbol is here again. This would show if it's a customer order, which is currently being held for someone. So the way that works is we want to be able to see that we have stock on hand of that product, but we don't want anyone else to be able to purchase it predominantly on our website. So if it's held for a person, the stock level publicly will drop by one. So you won't be able to oversell a product that's already being held for someone. We have our returns column here. That way we can see how many we're actually returning of this book. Do we have them in the cart ready to be sent off? It's just a nice way to see you know, straight away, has this book been sent back for return? We have our consignment box here. So at the moment it is a cross. Later on during training, we will have a look at consignments and we'll see when that box becomes a tick. Uh, that way we're actually able to see at a glance whether the book is a consignment item. We have our order quantity here. We're actually able to order this directly into our cart from here. So we could change the number of how many copies we wanted to add to our cart. The history plus sign here on the very far right hand side, if we click that, we can get a more detailed sales history. So it gives us three numbers here, one for purchase, one for sales, and one for returns. And we can start to see patterns. This will go month to month, year to year. And we can actually see if certain books perhaps sell a little better during certain times of the year. You always have this information available to you. So at any time you are able to see it, whether you're doing your actual ordering or just perhaps looking up some information on products, you can clearly see that information there. So going back to our title, we can click on the title of a product and be taken to essentially the metadata for this product. So it's everything that's not only publicly available from the publisher, you also have the ability to make local changes here as well. So I'll move through the shop fields here, which is our first uh, area. So we obviously have our cost price, which we set earlier when we imported this item. 
Uh, we also have our sales and regular price. So if you had an item that you wish to just drop the price on uh, for whatever reason, you could easily come in here, change that to a sale price and press save and that price would be updated instantly. We have the date added. So that's the date and time that it was added into our database. We can also see the last date it was brought in as well. So that's the last time it was received in on a purchase order. We have category. So categories can be changed through here. Uh, you can do it many different ways, but if there was just a single product that you wish to change the category on, it's very easy to go in here. To change the category, you simply click in the category field and start typing uh, the category which you wish to change it to and select it. We have shop notes here. So these are internal notes. Uh, they're not displayed uh, anywhere else, not on your website or anything like that. They are specifically a way for staff to really communicate to each other about a book. So you might have an item which is perhaps on a school book list. Uh, so you might put in there it's school book list and the month and the year. So when your staff are perhaps looking up a book, they can automatically see that that is uh, attributed to that school. It is a school book list item. So they're only for internal notes. We have our promote item box next that is related to our website. So I did mention in our first training video that there are ways that you can override the sorting that products are displayed on your website and promote item is one of those ways. So you might have a particular item that you wish to be front and center on your website all the time that you want customers to be able to see as soon as they start to browse a category. Using the promote item box here is the way to do that. You also have the ability to have items that are GST exempt if you have a use for that. And the product terms is the next drop down. So there are some options in the, pro in the product terms, sale or return, firm sale or consignment. There's a few different ways in which we can set that product terms, mainly during the inwards goods process when we're actually physically receiving the products in, but you can always go in and change that if you need to at a later date. We have an option here to have a local image and we can see here we can also have a local description as well. While the data which we automatically bring in is from the community and therefore from the publisher, we may want to have some local information as well. So you might have signed copies of a book. You want to make a point of having the signed copies with an image on your website. This would be where you would upload that image. Uh, same again with the local description. You might have a signing in your store. So you might want to make a point of putting in when the signing is happening in the local description. You also might want to put a video in of the actual signing taking place or a book reading, uh, something that's specific to your store. Because this is local information, it will not be shared amongst the community. It is specific to your website. Here we have our secondary categories. Items can have more than one category. So you might have uh, the category for this book, maybe history, but you might also want to have it under staff picks. So you can simply start typing the category that you wish to add to it and select it out of the drop dropdown. Uh, you can add as many uh, secondary categories as you want. It's quite common for stores to use secondary categories for things like staff recommendations, award winners, you know, Father's Day suggestions, Mother's Day suggestions, any sort of secondary category that you can think up, you can certainly use in this fashion. Uh, to remove a secondary category, there is a remove button here. You simply select the one you want and press remove. Loyalty enabled on this product. So by default, loyalty will be enabled on all products. So loyalty will be enabled by default on all products. You can opt to have products that do not accrue loyalty points. They may be discounted items that you don't wish to do that on. Uh, it's entirely up to you. It is obviously store specific to you. Core stock are items that you want your store to be known for, items that you never wanna run out of. You have the ability to look at these items in a report, whether they are selling or not, and choose to order more of them. These would predominantly be items that are best sellers in your stores, maybe local uh, books that you don't wish to run out of. They're items that at a glance you can quickly see 
that they are core stock items and items that are important to your business. We have a hidden box here. Uh, we did see in our first training video that you do have the ability to hide entire categories. However, there may just be certain items that you wish to hide for whatever reason. They may be expensive items you don't wish to ship. They may be items that are uh, large and bulky that are not worth uh, shipping to people. So the idea would be to hide them from your public website. So they're still available for sale in the store. They're still items that you have complete control over. They're just hidden from the public. We have here our static URL. If you are planning on using uh, social media and you wish to link back directly to products, it's advised to use the static URL to do this. It will never change, it is static, it will always link back to this product. Uh, you may find by using the longer URLs, they may change when uh, perhaps the title of a book is slightly edited or something like that. Uh, we would always recommend you use the static URL for that. Scrolling a little further down the page, we can see our core community fields. So our core community fields is the information that we get from the community, but predominantly from the publishers. This information must be changed with care if it needs to be changed at all. Most of the information you will find will be correct. All of this information is publicly available. It is available directly from the publishers and not something that would normally be changed by stores. We can see description, if there's any promotional in information or reviews from the publisher, all of that information will be loaded in here. Scrolling down a little bit further, we can see the images of the product. Once again, these are supplied by the publisher. A little bit further down, we have our stock fields. This is where you will find the barcode for the product uh, or the ISBN for books. There's also a reorder code here for non-book items too. The threshold box will be filled automatically based on your sales and be refreshed every month. You have the ability to add threshold items to your carts before sending them off to suppliers. We can see our number in stock. This can be changed. If we do need to manually change the stock level of a product, this would be where we would do it. We do need to give a reason though. This reason will be recorded with the user account that did it and it be available to the owner or manager later on to see who did change the stock level on this particular product. Moving further down, we find our community attributes. This is where we find author, series, the binding of the product, illustrator information, and anything else that would be relevant to this product. Once again, anything that can be changed in here has to be changed with care and the information has to be correct. If you have changed any information and you wish to save it, you'll find save buttons at the bottom of the screen and also at the top of the screen. We can send purchase orders off directly to suppliers, either via email or by EDI. We can also change the email address to send orders directly to reps from the company. To create a purchase order, first we go to purchase orders, cart. From here, we can choose from any cart that has products in it from any distributor. Once we've loaded up our shopping cart, we can have a look at all of the items that have been added. We can see basic info on each product. We can see the date in which it was added to our shopping cart, the ISBN, title, agency, and terms. This is where purchase order line notes would be displayed. We can also see if we have any copies of this book on order already with a supplier, and we can see our customer orders here as well. We can see the quantity of books that we're prepared to order. We can see the cost price, the sale price and recommended price here as well, with a total at the end of the line. We can also see a complete total of every single item that we are ordering. We have some basic stock information here as well. We can see how many copies we've got on hand. We can see if we've got any on approval, any held for customers or any returned. We can see very basic sales history here for three weeks, two weeks and one week and all time sales. If we need more detailed sales history, we can press on the plus sign and see month to month, year to year movements of this product. At any time, we can decide whether we want to up the quantity that we're ordering or lower them. If I decide that I wish to 
Order seven copies of this book. I can save my cart with seven there and it'll update the cart successfully. If I'm happy with the information I have on my screen and I wish to check out the cart, I can simply press check out selected and move to the next step. This will give me an overview of the purchase order which is going to be sent to the supplier. In this case here, it's going to be emailed to this supplier here and all I'm required to do is confirm that. Once I have confirmed my order, the products will be moved to currently on order and I'll be able to wait for their arrival. You may also need to place orders directly with a rep instead of dealing with the distributor. To do this, we go to purchase orders, cart and choose the supplier that we're going to be dealing with. Once again, we can change anything we need to in our shopping cart, removing items if we need to and changing quantities. If we're happy with the information that's on the screen, we simply check out selected, but instead of sending it to the supplier's direct sales email, we would change that email address to the rep's email and send it directly to them. Once we have successfully loaded metadata for a product into our database, we can then start adding it to our inventory. There's a few ways in which we can do this. First being stock input. Like Inwards Goods Jobs, that can be found under Inwards Goods Stock Input. The difference between the two is stock input doesn't require any additional information. We can see here that we can change our product type if needed. We can also put a reference in there if, re if required, but it's not something you need to use to continue. From here, it's just a matter of searching for the items. So we would simply start scanning these items in uh, using our multiplier if needed and simply press search. Uh, this is a really quick way of getting books into your inventory. Uh, the, the large downside to this is it does lack the same paper trail that you would have by using an invoice. It also doesn't give you the ability to print off customer order slips, and it doesn't give you the same control when you're actually receiving in the goods, as in you can't change the product terms or anything like that. Other than that, the margin calculator, the changing of prices, changing of category, all of that is the same. Uh, you can see here the quantity due as well. Uh, so it may be items that you do have on purchase orders. Uh, there are, like I said, there are some downsides to doing it this way. I would most likely uh, suggest this for suppliers that A, don't give you a traditional invoice, perhaps items that you purchase directly from a rep, or for new stores that have existing stock already. Uh, like I said, from here, all we would need to do is confirm the prices were correct and the categories were set. We have the ability to print labels off. And once we have done that, we can simply load stock and fill orders. It does make us confirm this as we're not confirming any other information. And we simply say, okay, and that job is submitted and completed. The other way in which we can add items to our inventory is by using the inwards goods process. The main difference between this and using stock input is we're required to give information regarding supplier, invoice number, dates, etc. There's two ways that inwards goods can be used, either by manually scanning in items and by setting prices at the end, or by using EDI. So now we'll take a look at the inwards goods process. So all of our inwards goods processes are done under the inwards goods tab in the back office. So we're just going to start a new job. So from here, you will just be entering in the information that is in front of you on the invoice supplied with your goods. I'm going to put in, that this is coming from United Book Distributors. I'm going to enter in an invoice number and a date. Now I'm going to enter in an invoice total. This will all be information you can find on your invoice and the total amount of items. So once I've entered in all of that information, all I'm required to do is to start scanning the products. 
So this is under the assumption that your store is not using the Packstream service. If you are using Packstream as a service, uh, we will do a separate video uh, addressing that. This is for stores that are not using Packstream. So at this point, you would start removing the bo books from the boxes and scanning them in. So I'll just scan these two books that I have in front of me. So once you have scanned every single item that is in all of the boxes on this invoice, you simply press search. So what this will do now is load all of those books into this list here in the order in which you have scanned them in. So what we need to do now is we need to make sure that we are getting this inwards goods variance down the bottom here as low as possible. Now, ideally, we would like to see it gone completely. However, on a very large order, uh, it's quite difficult to get rid of rounding. So sometimes we can have some variations there of a couple of cents here and there. That's fine. Um, at the end of the day, this is really for your system and to make sure that your cost price and selling price are correct. So this is a really good way to make sure that all of your information is correct within your system. So the first thing we're gonna have a look at here is our margins. So we can see here that this says we have a 40% margin. Uh, all of this information can be found on your invoice. So we'd make a point of going through and correcting anything that was wrong at this point. So we might find a particular item here, we'll say this first book here, we may have not received a 40% margin on that one for whatever reason, and we need to change that. So we'll just be going off the information that is on our invoice, and it might show that we received a 42% margin on that. I've ticked the box corresponding to that line, and I've put 42 into our margin calculator here. And now all I'm required to do is calculate cost from sale price. Now, in this situation, sale and regular price are the same, so it's not uh, that big of a deal which uh, arrow you do press, but we're gonna press this one here on the left-hand side. And you'll see here that that has changed our cost price here for this particular line, but it hasn't updated the information on the screen. So there are a couple of buttons here to do that. So what we would do is we would go through line by line, looking for any variations for anything that, that needs to be changed. And once we have adjusted some of our margins, and we may even have had to have adjusted some of our sale price. Uh, for example, this particular book here, we might find that it is actually $15.99. So we will change our sale price to $15.99. Uh, this arrow here is quite helpful. This arrow here will copy this sale price to the regular price, so we don't have to keep typing everything twice. So we'll click that there, and we'll make that $15.99 in our regular price. But you can see here, it has adjusted our margin again. That has adjusted it to 43.7. We might say that the correct margin for that one is 40. Uh, we can click on the line that's uh, corresponding to that item, and we can change our margin calculator to 40% and press the left hand arrow here. And now the margin for that one has been set to 40. Now, once we've gone through our invoice and adjusted our margins and sale price or any, any other discrepancies that are in there, there are a couple of buttons that we can press. So one is calculate totals, and this will essentially uh, recalculate everything on, on the screen. It's fantastic, it does exactly what it says it does. However, I prefer in my store to use the save button. It does the exact same thing, except it saves it as a job that I can come back to later. I just find this helpful. Um, I know that if something happens, the window that I'm working on is closed, or the computer crashes, or the power goes out or something, that that job has been saved. So I prefer to press the save button. And what that does is essentially refreshes the entire screen with the updated values that we've put in there. So I've just updated that price again uh, to $14.99, which is correct, but I can still see here that I've got some discrepancies. I have a $1.62 variance on this invoice, and 
being that it is such a small invoice, it is only two items, uh, I would ideally like to get that down to zero. So this is where I would be looking at my invoice. I would be comparing the margin to what I see here. Now I'm gonna assume that the margin on this is 45%. So I'm looked at, I've looked at my invoice, I can see here 45 is what I'm. Uh, my margin is on these items. So I'm gonna leave every box here along the side here ticked. I'm gonna simply put 45 into our margin calculator and I'm going to press the left hand arrow here. Now, once that's done, you'll, you will see here that it says zero down the bottom, but nothing's been saved on our job yet. So what I'm going to do is go right down the bottom and press save again. And that has completely removed any discrepancy there with our inwards goods variance, which is what I'm going for. Once we've done that, it's probably a good opportunity to have a look at any other problems that might be there. We can see here that there's uh, categories here. You might spot something while you're receiving in and notice that this particular book has been put in the wrong category and you'd like to change that. Uh, you can change that just by simply clicking on the category, uh, typing what you're after and selecting it from the dropdown. Uh, any changes you make, you always wanna hit save. Now you might have freight as well. You can enter in a freight amount. Obviously with books, we often don't see a lot of freight amounts, but you can enter that in, especially for non-book items as well. I'll save that now so I can save that category information. If there was any discrepancies on your uh, invoice, uh, perhaps you were short supplied an item or there were damages or you were sent the wrong item, it's important to receive in items that are damaged or short supplied. Now, the reason that you do this is, generally speaking, most book distributors aren't going to send you a replacement anyway. What they're probably going to do is credit you. So you need to be able to generate a paper trail, essentially, to say that short supplied this item, and this is the corresponding invoice that comes off. So what we need to be able to do is to generate a short supply or a damage report with all the relevant information on it and send that through to the supplier. So it is important to receive in products even if they are damaged or short supplied. If that happens, I would recommend using the notes section here just for yourself, just to make a few notes in there, perhaps short supplied or damage with the ISBN information. It's not necessary, but it's nice to be able to go back and if you do look back three or four months later and you can often see, you can see the information there, what was wrong with this particular order. So from here, we'll be moving left to right. What we'll be doing first is printing off slips for customer orders. Now, none of these books are customer orders. They would be represented here in the CO column. We will go through that during our special order creation. We'll go through the entire process from start to finish. So from here, uh, we would print slips, bulk message customers. We would change the terms of the books if we're required. Uh, we can see this particular one here has been set to firm sale. That may be incorrect. This information would be available on the invoice in front of you. So I'm gonna tick that box here and I'm going to set that to sale or return. We can see that that's been updated. Now from here, we can save our screen, uh, come back to this job later if we need to. We can remove lines from our inwards goods process as well. Not very common, normally you would just be going through the process. So save and print labels. If you are printing labels for the products, this is the point where you would do it during the inwards goods process. So the idea would be from here, we press save and print labels, opens up another tab. It confirms in this instance that we need to print two labels, we would say yes, and we would print off the labels to our barcode printer. Once you have done that, our final step here is to load stock and fill orders. You'll see here that reserve stock has been ticked as well. That is by default. That would mean any customer orders would automatically be re reserved. And we very much wanna make sure that happens so that those books are not available to be sold on your website because they have been reserved for customers. So just before we press load stock and fill orders, if we come back to the center of our screen here is where we can actually see our purchase order information. So from here, you could go through your invoice and actually match those purchase order numbers up with the products on there. That is definitely one way that you could do it and you could tick them line by line. However, you can also tick the box at the top of the list here and that box will tick all of the purchase order numbers. Uh, if you have the same book ordered multiple times on multiple purchase orders, 
Uh, Circle will essentially just allocate those books to the oldest purchase order. So once we've done that, we're now ready to load stock and fill orders. So as soon as we do that, our screen will refresh. It will show us that our job is loaded. Stock prices and categories will be updated. From here, it's a matter of just sticking those labels if you have printed them on straight onto the books and they're ready to go out on the shelf. And that is the whole inwards goods process. So the last subject we'll cover in this video will be our refund and exchange process. All refunds and exchanges are done through the POS. The first one we'll do is a refund. So like a sale, you would scan the item that's being refunded into your POS. But instead of it being quantity one, we're gonna change that to negative one because the product's not leaving your store, it's coming back to you. From here, we would choose our payment method in which we're going to do our refund. I'm gonna choose card. You'll notice that it doesn't auto fill any amount here. You do that manually. So you would enter in negative 1499. This is because we're minusing off that amount from our card payments for the day. From here, you'd be required to enter in whatever process your particular uh, terminal, your FPOS terminal uses. Most of the time you'd have to enter in some sort of a merchant ID or password to allow a refund to happen. Once that refund has been processed, this is like any other transaction that is going through your POS. You would simply press spacebar or press the post button to finalize. That will print a receipt that'll have all of the refund information on there. The other process we'll go through is to do an exchange. So an exchange is done in the same way we would scan the book that the customer is returning to us. Once again, instead of being quantity one, it will be negative one. Now the customer might bring something else up to the counter that they'd like to exchange for. In this scenario, it's a one for one exchange. To finalize, all we would be required to do is to hit the space bar. No amount of money needs to be tendered and this will even itself out. Your stock levels will be changed. The other scenario would be that a customer returns a product to you. We'll change this to negative one again. Scan this item and this one. From here, it becomes a normal transaction. We can see that there is $14.99 owing to us. When we choose our method of payment card, it will auto fill. And from here, it's like any other transaction. To finalize, we simply press spacebar. That concludes training session two. You'll now be able to load stock into your inventory, see what information is displayed on the screen, place orders with suppliers or reps, and then process the orders when they're received at your store. You'll also be able to do exchanges and refunds at your POS. If you have any further questions, you can always book in a training session with myself or one of our other trainers. The links will be posted below.